Hello, Flame community. This is Jeff Kyle with the Flame Learning Channel. After much anticipation, Batch Paint has been updated. The Paint node is a staple in most compositors toolkits, and in Flame 2024, it has seen a major update with user interface improvements and a smattering of new features that answer a number of feature requests that artists have had over the years. In this first video, I'll be going over how the interface has changed, what's gone, what's new, and how these exciting new features might affect some existing workflows. Here we are in the new and improved paint node, and straight out of the gate, if you're used to the paint node from previous versions of Flame, you'll probably notice that some areas have shifted around. Previously, the range, viewing, and canvas sections were off to the right side, but they're now moved closer to the sources and strokes list box since you're more likely to need to modify those fields while you're working with the paint and edit box area. That leaves the brush presets and brush settings that used to be in the middle of the screen off to the right side now. You choose your paint mode right here in the middle of the screen under mode. And if you take a look when I click on the paint mode, this list hasn't changed from previous versions of Flame, but the keyboard shortcuts for each paint mode are visible to make it a little more discoverable if you aren't as familiar with these shortcuts. That's the control key and then the number of the mode, control one for color, control two for clone, and so on. Just above that, we can see our brush preset list. This is another feature that was in previous versions of Flame, but it wasn't prominently featured like this. It used to be a small number off to the right side. Now you can see and more easily keep track of what preset you're on and switch between them depending on your task using the numbers one through zero. The brush area has been broken down into two columns to accommodate this new axis tab where you're able to take the paint strokes you select in the edit list and change their position, scale, or rotation. The axis tab is also where you go to enter the new paint tracker, which we'll discuss at length in its own video. The paint and edit toggleable buttons have been converted to tabs and moved to the top of the paint and edit list. If you're used to using the gestural swipe to toggle between paint and edit, rest assured you're still able to do so, although the swipe area has been reduced to avoid switching modes when you didn't mean to. You'll now have to swipe down while hovering over the paint or edit list. It no longer works to switch between the two anywhere outside of that area. The lock, hide, and clear buttons have been removed to make room for other features. The lock feature can be accessed via the lock checkbox in the sources list. The hide and clear buttons have changed just a bit. All the functionality is still there, but the way you get there is a little different, but I'll be going into more detail about that in a future video. The Reveal Paint mode has a new keyboard shortcut associated with its overlay transformation controls. Previously, when toggling on the overlay mode with Tab, you were able to use the keyboard shortcut Control shift drag to transform the overlaid frame in X and Y around the screen. Now, with Flame 2024, you can use the keyboard shortcut Control alt drag to rotate the overlaid frame. Being able to control this with a keyboard shortcut and not just the rotation field is an incredible quality of life improvement that will be a big time saver. While we're still talking about the reveal mode, there's a brand new button called Add Still over in the Paint tab. This is similar to the Add Source button, but with quite a bit of extra functionality. If you're familiar with the Save buffer inside of Desktop Paint, you'll find this feature is quite similar. Add Still takes the current state of your paint node, freezes it on its current frame, and adds that new media to your batch. It then creates a new paint source layer and connects the newly created media to that paint source layer all in one button. The key takeaway here is that it isn't the equivalent of adding in a MUX freeze frame into a new paint source layer, because if you've already done a bit of paint work, it incorporates all of that work into the still that it saves out. In order to achieve the add still workflow previously, you would have to add a MUX freeze frame of the paint node you were using, and then add a second paint node with the MUX freeze frame as the source layer. The ability to keep this grouped in one paint node and the fact that it's one click away opens the door to some powerfully quick new workflows. But before we move on, it's very important to note that this newly created add still media is generated by Flame and is not linked to the original source. If you get an updated plate or a new color grade on your footage, you might find yourself painted into a corner, so to speak, because the add still media that was generated won't reflect the updated plate. So try to plan accordingly if you know you'll be getting some revised content down the road. 
Finally, in previous versions of Flame, when you were looking at a stroke in the edit list, the time bar would highlight green to indicate the frame range of the stroke in question. This is still the case in Flame 2024, but now you'll see that this same behavior takes place in the Paint tab as well, helping to ensure you're painting on the frame range that you intend to before you start working. If you like these videos and you're finding them helpful, please subscribe to the Flame Learning Channel and click the bell to stay notified about new content. Feel free to comment any questions or suggestions below. Until next time, thanks a bunch for watching.